Trump was stuck in a Manhattan courtroom for his hush money trial. Meanwhile, his attorneys fought to defend his presidential immunity argument in the Supreme Court. But while the campaign trail was off the table, Trump woke up early to get some time with Biden's beloved union workers. Normally, a Democrat will win New York. Biden is the worst president in history. And Biden hit the campaign trail in the swing state of Florida, capitalizing off those courtroom moments to bash Trump at a union trade event. Because of you, in 2024, we're going to make Donald Trump a loser again. Well, here to unpack who fared better this week, former Speaker of the Oklahoma House of Representatives and Bank CEO T.W. Shannon and Democratic analyst and Newsweek contributor Ellis Hennigan. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thanks for being a part of Friday Night Fights. T.W., I'm going to start with you. So Trump's out there saying that he can win New York, but a Siena College poll has Biden up by 10 points. Does he have a chance? Well, you know, people have underestimated Donald Trump at every turn. So I would be the first to, to not second guess him again. Be a little tough to win New York at this point. But the reality is there are a lot of Americans turning to Donald Trump. Over 70 percent of Americans are clear that they don't think Joe Biden is healthy enough because of his mental decline to lead this country. So I don't think he absolutely wins New York. But boy, he's sure making a lot of headway in places people didn't think he would. Donald Trump has all the momentum in this election. And I think he's going to surprise a lot of people um, on election night. So Ellis, the last time a Republican won New York was in 1984 when Reagan won then. But you saw those union workers going crazy for Trump. So what do you say? Don't be fooled. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. I got, I got a piece of good news for you. It ain't going to happen. But I love it, by the way, when uh, Trump supporters get overconfident the way T.W. is, uh, thinking they got it in the bag, thinking Joe Biden doesn't have anything. He's sleepy Joe. He can't come out of his basement. Keep thinking that, please. All right, T.W., Trump was the talk of the media this week because of his court cases. Is all press good press for Trump at this point? Well, he's certainly getting a lot of it because of the Democrats' strategy. The Democrats know, based on polling, they can't beat him in the polls, so they're trying to beat him in the courtroom. You know, But the reality is the American Constitution is built on this idea that we are a republic, a constitutional republic, and we should be electing our presidents, not deciding who's the president by trying to get them thrown off the ballot. We've seen all types of, of election interference, in my opinion, if you consider holding up a president of the United States for what really seems to be pretty bogus charges in most regards. Donald Trump has all the momentum in this election, and the reality is the Democrats know it, and it's not being overconfident. The reality is the polling indicates Donald Trump's ahead in most of the swing states where it's really going to matter, and I only see that lead growing at this point. Okay, Ellis, when it comes to Biden, the media had their sights set on a story that actually has some legs. The president has a new walking routine, apparently, from the South Lawn to Marine One. He won't walk solo anymore, they say. Biden's aides will surround him. Is this strategy going to work to draw the attention away from his age? Huh? No. Come on. It's nothing to do with that. That's just that's just paranoid people thinking. I don't know what, by the way, I know what Constitution T.W.'s been reading, but, but the one that I'm no, 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 nobody, that nobody is above the law, including including an ex-president of the United States who's now been indicted in four separate venues. So so that's the Constitution that I've always believed in. I'm not sure which one you've been reading. Well, I will well, say, Alice, that Biden's advance age has been a challenge for his campaign this cycle, so much so that the campaign even came out with this ad. Listen. Look, I'm not a young guy. That's no secret. Okay, apparently 61% of voters <laughs> who backed Biden in 2020 say that he is too old to be an effective president. So, T.W., is this humor going to help Biden? Joe Biden made a commitment to unite this country in a way he has. 70% of Americans are concerned about his mental ability to lead this country. That's a pretty united front. And yes, I read the Constitution when I graduated from law school and what the Constitution indicates. And most of the Supreme Court justices seem to also agree that the president does enjoy broad immunities when he's acting within his official capacity. And in most regards, President Trump was. Where the, where the case is going to come down to that we're facing right now in the Supreme Court is what was the, actually uh, him acting in his official capacity and what was his personal, but, right. what was personal. But the Supreme Court justices agree the president should enjoy broad immunities when acting as the president. All right, well, I got to jump in here because we're out of time. We'll have to come back another day. T.W. Ellis, thanks for getting in the ring tonight.